to get some information about the fourth grade state science test. The first thing I'll talk about are the dates that the science tests are. If you notice on the sheet that I handed out, it says that the performance part, there's two parts. The part one, the performance part, is from May 22nd to May 31st. That does not mean that it's a seven or eight day test. Your children are not taking the test for eight days. It's a one day test, that part of it, the performance part. They come into a room, I'm not sure where it's gonna be yet, probably the library, but we're not sure yet. We, um, they come in for one hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. They take the performance part of the test and then they go away. And that's it for the performance part. The reason that it's given over so many days is because the, it's given in small groups and they have to do experiments by themselves. So we can only test a few children at a time. Usually a group of about 15 to 20 students at a time. But there's over 120 students to test. So therefore it's over an eight day period. The makeup window is within that period. So don't go on vacation that, that time period because if you're not here for those days, then your child will not take the state test. So they will forfeit that ability to take the test. So if they're absent on it, let's say I try and schedule them for May 24th and they're not there that day and then they come in 25th, they will take it the 25th. So it's the makeup time is within that window. So the performance part of the test is, the kids usually have a lot of fun with it. It's based, it's experiment based, it's investigation based. They will get set, uh, stations are set up, usually three or four stations. Children have a booklet to go by, an instruction booklet, and they go, they do experiments at each station. They write their answers and then they're done. Uh, every student gets to do every station on the science test and the most important thing is it's all independent work. They cannot get any help from me, from any other student. All the directions are in the booklet. And I always say, if your child can read and follow directions and write, they will do fine on this test. The biggest part of this is following directions. One of the ways that I always encourage parents to work with their kids to help them is follow a recipe at home. It's basically a how-to. If they can follow step by step, me measure the flour, measure the water, measure the liquids, the milk, whatever. If they can do all of those things and follow that recipe, then they should be able to be fine. They have to be able to follow steps. One of the problems that I always find is that kids think they just don't have to follow the directions. They see a ruler, so they're gonna say, oh, I guess I should measure this. Or they see a measuring cup, oh, let me spill water into here. The, the instruction book really does spell everything out. Read do and write. It's very, very specific and it's very easy to follow. Every station usually comes with a station diagram, so they'll have a picture at their station telling them what the tools are, the names of the tools. They'll already know how to use the tools because all of that is built into the science curriculum. We're working with tools all the time. So they will have the station diagram. If they're not sure that this is a measuring cup, it'll tell them right there. All the tools that are at their station they should be using all of those tools within their investigations. So that's the performance part. The performance part is timed. Okay, this is the only state test that that part is timed. They get approximately 15 minutes per station, unless student has modifications and they get a little bit of extra time, and even then it's not more than 22 minutes. If this test was untimed, I would have students sitting there all day long playing with equipment because they have so much fun doing it. So that is the timed portion of the test. If they do not finish at that station, they must go on to the next station anyway. Once they finish a the station, they can go back to their booklet and if they haven't done some calculations or if they want to review their work, they can always go back in their booklet to the other stations, but they cannot go back to another station. Once they are finished at a station and they go on, that's it. So for example, I have my three students here, so I'm going to use you three, okay? So let's say you're at station one, you're at station two, and you're at station three. You're doing each of your own things at your own station. So they shouldn't be looking at each other and saying, oh, look what he's doing. Maybe I should, they have totally different materials and totally different equipment. So Jacqueline's doing her thing, Valerie's doing her thing, Eric's doing his thing, and that's it. Time is up, 15 minutes are finished. They rotate, I, pick, I stand them up, they rotate. Eric goes to station one, Jacqueline goes to station two, Valerie goes to station three. They do that piece of it. And then the last time around, they, they rotate again. There's usually three or four stations 
And I've never really had a problem with students finishing as long as they're focusing and concentrating on what they have to do in their station. So that's basically it for the performance part. Again, there are ways that you can help your child practice. A lot of measuring, there's always some sort of measuring sta station. So measuring with a ruler, measuring cups, measuring spoons, things like that. You can always help them with that. Any questions on the performance part before I go on? Okay, so part two is the written part. The written part is given on June 3rd. That's in the child's classroom with their teacher and their classroom teacher. So that test is usually 30 multiple choice questions and somewhere between 10 and 15 short answers. I've never seen any essays. That doesn't mean there won't be one, but I've never seen an essay. The short answers can range anything from one word answers. For example, two pictures of parks and they may ask, uh, give an example of a living thing in the picture above, give an example of a non-living thing in the picture above. Really simple. Or could be something a lot more complicated where they give them a data table with data and numbers in it and then they ask them to make a bar graph based on the numbers. So it is a lot of math. There's a lot of math included in the state science test. Sometimes they might look for patterns in the chart. For example, if uh, sunrise on these dates is 851, 852, 853, and then the next one's blank. They may ask them, what do you think the next sunrise might be? So they look for patterns in the chart. Sometimes they may give them properties of an object, uh, a marble and a ball. They might say this one's rough, this one's smooth, uh, this one is red, this one is blue, and they may ask them to make a Venn diagram based on it. So it's also incorporating ELA and the graphic organizers that we use in ELA. So it, there can be anything. But what I would suggest to practice for the written part of the test is go to the old New York State tests. All the old New York State science tests since 2004 are on the website. And on the bottom, I've given you some websites. If you see the New York, uh, New York State Education Department regions.org grade four science, that website has all the old tests. Not only can they practice the test there if you want to print them out and they can practice them that way, there's also a scoring guide, there's a, a key which for the multiple choice, and there's also a scoring guide for the short answers. So it will even tell you if you answer this, give a point. If you answer this, give two points. Look for this and this question. So either your child can self-assess and mark it themselves, or you can, sell, you can assess them and you can figure out from there where are their strengths and weaknesses. If your child gets every question on electricity wrong, then you know that that's something that you might want to work on with your child to concentrate on that topic and go back to the textbook, which is also online and everything is here. Or you can get a book from uh, the library, you can look on the internet, wherever, there are many resources. If you also find out that your child is getting all the questions on food chains correct, then that's something you may not have to concentrate on. Let them just practice. By doing these tests, you're gonna see that the questions are very similar year after year after year after year. Are they gonna change it this year? I don't see the test before you, so I have no idea. So hopefully they won't, but year after year, you're gonna to get to see the same types of questions. They change the order, they change the questions, they change the, whether they're multiple choice or short answer, but they're basically, the topics are the topics are the topics. They're the same things that we've been teaching. The fourth grade state test covers pretty much everything your child's been learning in school since they started here, uh, kindergarten and up. The biggest topics of third and fourth grade. So it's everything we've been learning in fourth grade and plus some of the things they learned in third grade. For example, sound and light we did in third grade, we don't do in fourth grade. Simple machines we did a lot in third grade. I did one quick review this year with them in fourth grade force and motion, gravity, friction, things like that. We don't do too much of that in fourth grade, but we did a lot of it in third grade. So it is really a mixture of tests. If you look on my website, which is also on here, the ps 100 conownschoolorg if you look for my name under there, if you go into the faculty and staff, if you find my name, I have a whole lot of resources there, science resources, and um, the, uh, on the bottom, I have everything about the New York State science test, so you can just click on it. You don't even have to type any of this in. You can just click on it, and it'll bring you there. If you want to look at the textbook online at all, I've gone over this with the students, but the textbook is still online, fortunately. A lot of 
Parts of it are old, they're outdated, but the online textbook you can still get. And the information to sign in is also on my website. The username is NYORK4, password is science, but all that information is on the website. Questions? If we want to go to the fourth grade science. I have a link on my website, or you can type it in from here. It's um, practice fourth grade state science test. It's the www.nysedregions.org. No, 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 the book, the textbook from the, from the third grade. Oh, you can go to NY, it, the, the, all the passwords are on my website, but the third grade textbook is NYORK3. Okay. So in this is, in the fourth grade textbook is four, the, the third grade textbook is three. If you want to go back to second grade, it's NYORK2. Okay. And if you want to go to the fifth grade textbook, which you probably won't need, because we're not even doing this program anymore. Um, a lot of parents do ask me about test prep. Am I doing test prep? Am I doing review with the students? I don't do test prep. One, I only see your students, your children, three times a week, and I don't have time for a test prep because I have to teach science. Um, everything that is built into the science curriculum is test prep. I, it is preparing them, it is teaching them the standards that prepare them to take the test. Our school has historically done very well on the state science test. Over 95% of our students usually get threes and fours, um, but they find the test easy because everything that they learned is on the test. The curriculum is built in such a way to cover that. Again, if you find that your child is having some weaknesses and not understanding some of the topics, there are plenty of resources available for them to, to, to hone up on those specific topics. So how, how it's possible, like, if the test is on June 3rd? The written is June 3rd, yeah. yes. And the, the child uh, finishes the school, like, June 3rd? Yes, the, the results don't come in until usually September or October. They come in next year, but that's with all of the state tests. They usually come in around August, yeah, September. But if this child is failed, how um, the state test, and I, I'm, I, I'm not going to. First of all, I'm not going to talk about promotional criteria. But as far as I understand, the state tests are not the promotional criteria anymore. The students don't go on to next grade based on the test alone. It's based on their whole, whole portfolio of work that they've been doing in class mm -hmm. all year long. This is a measure of what they've learned for the entire it's not a measure of their promotional criteria should they go on to the next grade or not and i believe that's for all that's this is miss bolero she's our uft person and our math world. teacher i don't believe that the state tests are are the the criteria for promotion anymore yes yes yeah, it's not they, for they look it, at the overall yes. because the way the superintendent explained at the last meeting that I had with the with the president's council is that you know what happens is that the child could be a brilliant child but something happened that day and they just didn't do well because the head hurt or something happened. So what they do is they will look at the entire year, school year you know performance of the child and that's you know based on that they will move you up and. Right. Therefore, the kid gets the grade that they get. So the promotion, the promotion is not based on the state test. It's a part of, you know, whatever they're doing and to see what their strengths. And it also helps the teacher the following year know what that child is good at and what the child needs support in. And then we could work from that year on and, and move the child up. Okay. So, okay. So I just also wanted to go over the other packet that I gave you out. This is just some... Um, Samples. This is not the test from 2016. This is just the cover page so you can see what it looks like. And then I just pulled out some sample questions from various old tests. If you can look, if you can turn to page 14 where it has the temperatures, you'll see what I was talking about with math and science and how the interrelated they are. It basically gives you a data table that's showing the air temperatures recorded at noon for five days. And then it asks math questions. It says how much lower was the temperature at noon on Wednesday than at noon on Monday. So the students have to know they have to subtract to get the answer. So, it, so as I've always been telling the students all along since I know them, math, science, ELA, social studies, everything goes hand in hand, it goes all together. Um, if you look at the, the next page, this is a short answer. They're giving you data, they're giving you a picture, and then the students have to fill out a data table what objects would sink and what objects would float based on the picture. So again, these are just some samples that I thought might be helpful. The back page is all about simple machines. This is something we go in depth in third grade and I just do a quick review in fourth grade. 
and it gives them the names, it gives them a little word box, and then they have to fill in the, the simple machines that it's representing, the symbols. So again, just some sample questions, but there are many, many more questions on the practice tests that are already online, backed from 2004. So you could be doing them from now until June 3rd, and you probably won't be able to finish them. Can I ask so, one question? Yes, you can ask as many questions as you want to, as long as I'm still here. <laughs> The written part is not a time test. It usually takes most students about an hour to finish. Um, as a, again, it's mostly multiple choice, and the short answers, as you see, they're not essays. So it's not like the ELA where they're writing and writing and writing and writing. The, the written part is not timed. The performance part is timed. Yes. Any other questions? OK. Well, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. If any of you have any questions at any point in time about the test or about anything in science, you know you could always send me a quick dojo. I will be putting together a, a tentative schedule for the students that are going to be taking the test, the days that they're going to take it, which I hope to share with you. But it's very tentative. For example, if I have five students on the date and then they're all absent, I go to the next date and I just fill in. So. Just make sure that, you know, no extended vacations during the time of the state science test. Don't think now the ELA and the math is over, now I could go away. Science is still here. No, no, I'm saying after, I'm saying after math. I'm saying in May, May 2nd or May 3rd, we still have science at the end of the year. So, if you have, again, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a dojo. Just a little bit for me. I noticed.